slow-mo Yeah, don't go, don't go I just can't come close, come close I'm looking for the loco, loco No, I don't wanna postpone, postpone Yeah, whip it, flip it I just wanna get it Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this upper receiver that you guys see here from Geisley. Uh, you guys probably already knew that from clicking on the video, but uh, this is the 10.3 inch URGI or improved upper receiver group. And uh, originally, back when I first laid my paws on this, it was May of 2018. And I was down at Reveille Peak Ranch and Geisley was a sponsor of the event there. And they actually had one of these out to play with. I shot a video for it, but they were never gonna release it to the public. So I was like, well, I'm not gonna release the video then. Uh, many of you guys Guys know that video has been out for a couple months now and the reason for that is that these are now available for the public to pick up and are not just a military um, sale item only so that is good news there for everybody involved what we're going to do today is go over the all the different details that go into it what makes it kind of cool and unique but before we do that we're going to see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this setup here now we're going to see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this barrel we do have some wind uh hopefully it's not messing up the audio too bad we got about a half value wind going right to left from our back uh shouldn't matter too much at this distance um the rifle as you see it right now is a bcm fbr blower and uh just has the pnt trigger in there so no fancy trigger unfortunately that might help. It also might help to have a little more than six mag uh, magnification that we have here on the Vortex Razor, but it's excellent glass. And I think this is a pairing a lot of people are going to look for, both military and civilian. So I kind of want to run it together. Um, other than that, factory as can be. Um, in the gun right now is M193, Winchester M193, I should say, 556 chambering from LAX ammo. And then we have some more match type loads here. Uh, to run through it. Target's downrange at 100 yards, and uh, I'll shut up and uh, get to the shooting part. I think that was five rounds. We shall see in the tape. Um, I should mention, this is a CTK Precision Rest. People always ask that since I was playing with it. People will definitely ask that. Um, up next is going to be some Winchester. This is their 69 grain match load 223 chambering. And uh, we'll see how she does. 69 grain match loads tend to do pretty darn well. That group looks a little better, that's for sure. Up next is going to be some 77 grain, uh, 223 chambering again from Gorilla Ammunition. This is the Sierra Match King load, so it's going to be uh, heavy for caliber for sure. And we'll see how this uh, Daniel Defense barrel likes it. We do have some Hornady. This is a 75 grain bolt tail hollow point load, 223 chambering. Super performance match. The name like that, better shoot. Woo, that wind's kicking up, guys. Let's go check them out. Again, the first load up was that M193 Winchester stuff. That one round there kind of really threw it for a loop. We're right at two and three quarter inches on that one. Then we came over here, I believe, with the Winchester 69 grade load. That's a pretty good looking group. Right there, we're right at a, an inch and a quarter on that one. Came down here with the 77 grainers from Gorilla. Looks like it opened up just a touch. We're at an inch and a half on that one. Then the Hornady here looks like the best group. And yeah, it is. Uh, we are just under an inch there, center to center, about seven eighths, three quarters of an inch with that Hornady 75 grain. So, uh, no doubt about it, uh, the barrel is accurate, it shoots well. Uh, you guys can see that. I would imagine, again, a little better trigger, maybe a little magnification, and uh, those groups will tighten up just a little bit there as well. 
Now that we've got the accuracy out of the way, which is pretty good accuracy if I didn't say so already, uh, we'll get into the details of it. Start out here at the end and sort of work our way back. We have a Surefire four-prong flash hider. Uh, what's cool about that is that up until the URGI's released to the public, these were only available to military customers from Surefire. Um, you'd see some gray market ones where maybe a box fell off a supply truck or something like that and somebody picked it up and resold it. They're very, very hard to get and very expensive by themselves. Um, it functions very similar to a three-prong. And it also will work as a mount if you guys have any Surefire 556 suppressors. Uh, so that certainly is a good thing. But they're still really expensive if you're actually looking to pick one up. Generally speaking, from what I've seen on the forums, they're still over $200. So it's less than it used to be, but it's still expensive for sure. Continuing on back underneath the handguard there, we have a 10.3 inch Daniel Defense barrel. It's cold hammer forged, chrome lined, and it's HPMP tested. It is a government profile because the government, for whatever reason, seems to love government profile stuff. And uh, so back here where the carbon length gas system is, it's a little bit um, thinner than out here at the gas block. It goes to 0.75 inches all the way out to the threads. Now the threads half by 28th, it is not a pinned uh, muzzle device like it was on some of the uh, 14 and a half inch URGIs. So if you want to swap it out in any way with any muzzle device, brake, suppressor that you want to, feel free to do so. It's not going to hurt anything. And uh, you can put this back on when you're done. The gas block that comes with the upper receiver is Geissele's Super Duty gas block. It has the bomb proof installation, meaning that it is actually pinned to the barrel. And then the set screws are dimpled and then put in there and there's thread locker on there so very unlikely that they'll ever come out however they also paint mark them so that way you can tell if they've moved at all as you guys can see here mine hasn't moved one bit which is exactly what you expect it's one of the best gas box out there on the market in my opinion especially when done with the pinning it's again bomb proof that's what they call it and i tend to agree with them the handguard is Geissele's Mark 16 handguard. This one here is 9.3 inches long. It's in DDC coloration. It has M-lock slots at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock position, as well as the in-between positions. That certainly is nice, because if you're running like a laser designator and you want to get everything as tight and high as you can in there with it, um, those offset slots just allow you to do it and give you more mounting options with the plethora of different mounts that uh, are out there on the market. Uh, many of you guys probably saw me running this in some night shooting and then day shooting, of course. Uh, we had a Steiner D-ball on there with a uh, Surefire Vampire Light in an air socket mount, and it definitely mounts up there nice and snug, which is awesome. We have quick attach sling swivel points at the uh, left and right side of the handguard. They're up towards the top, which is nice, so that way if you have your rifle slung up, it's going to stay vertical. Uh, that always is important and isn't always the case with some handguards and the way their QD slots work. Continuing on back here, we have these two anti-rotational tabs on both sides of the handguard. Um, while a lot of uh, rails out there will just have them at the top, uh, preventing it from going back and forth should it come loose. Uh, this also has it down here on the bottom, and these are set in place with a set screw with thread locker, so it mates up with the upper receiver. There's really no way these things can move, guys, and that's on top of the standard uh, Geissele barrel nut, which is awesome and is well regarded. And uh, the screws on this are different, as is the lockup, I should say, with those tabs than any of their other handguards out there. So the Mark 13 and Mark 14 are the current versions. This is different if you actually look at them uh, next to each other. The upper receiver itself is a Forge 7075T6 affair. You guys can see we have our square forge mark on there. Again, we're gonna have T markings on the top that are subdued, continuing with what we already saw. It has the M4 feed ramps in there and it does come with a dry film lubricant on the inside of it. Um, mine's long gone, of course, but that is mil spec as you would expect. The charging handle here is a 7075T6 charging handle. It's their airborne uh, charging handle. What's nice about this one is, um, unlike their you know original charging handle that was a little bit wider, this one has these extended latches, and it is ambidextrous, as you guys can see. It has these extended latches, but they don't extend out as far, and that's why it got the name Airborne, because they're in airborne operations. Anybody who has uh, performed the human lawn dart test in the Army or any other service you were in, I suppose, knows that when you're going out of a plane, things tend to snag the same thing as you're uh, going through the air. So we don't want that. We want to mitigate that as much as possible. That's why this one here has a smaller latches. This one also has markings that are exclusive to the URGI. So you can't just buy this one uh, with the same markings here. You have to get it through the URGI. They do sell one that's just like this though, um, just with different markings. 
Again, the ambidextrous controls, as you can see, it has the DDC coloration as well. And the big thing uh, from a functional standpoint in terms of, or rather in addition to these uh, ambidextrous charging handles, extended handles, I should say, is that it has this gas buster piece on the top. So if you're running this thing suppressed and uh, typically gas would come back with a standard uh, USGI charging handle, it's gonna mate up with the upper receiver in a way that's gonna prevent the vast majority, I'm guessing, this is just me spitballing, over 90% of it from coming through. So from the shooter's perspective, that's awesome because you're not getting gas in your eyes and you're not crying, those sorts of things, uh, which is, is not cool. You don't wanna have that happen, whether you're in the military on an operation or if you're on YouTube shooting videos, you gotta look cool. Charging, or rather the uh, bulk carrier group, I should say, is mil spec in every way. So if you were to Google the TDP, that's what you get right here. So we have our uh, 158 Carpenter Bolt. It's HP and MP tested. Um, materials wise, it's the exact same, like I just said, with a mil spec one. Uh, we have a six, uh, 8620 rather carrier. It has a chrome portion here where the actual bolt rides in there and the gas key itself is also chrome lined. We have good staking on there and uh, absolutely nothing to complain about in terms of the bolt carrier group. We've already discussed the accuracy portion, now reliability. It's been 100% both this one that I have here as well as the one that I used when I was down in Texas as we talked about earlier. So absolutely zero malfunctions of any kind, whether suppressed, unsuppressed, um, regardless of the type of ammo we put through it. The vast majority of that would be M193 from LAX ammo. But yeah, it's run completely fine. And I should also mention in terms of cyclic operations, it does come with the H3 buffer and a braided Geissele Super 42 spring as well. So that comes with it, um, which is nice. I think they're running the H3 simply because a lot of people are probably gonna run it suppressed. So they wanted to have a little bit more uh, material back there while it's cycling. So that is reliability price. Um, for this particular one here, the MSRP I believe is $12.49. Then they also sell a stripped version of it, which is basically not going to have the flash hider, not going to have the charging handle, not going to have the bolt carrier group. And it's a little bit less as you guys can see here on your screen. Of course, we'll drop links down below for all this stuff if anybody's looking to get one. But one thing I wanted to kind of show here to compare and contrast, this is my Mark 18 upper. And uh, essentially what this is, is a modernized Mark 18. Now the Mark 18, Lord knows how long ago that thing came out. I don't know that off the top of my head, but it's been years, probably a decade at this point, I would guess. And uh, obviously we have the RS rail, which is an awesome product. This entire upper is awesome. I'm not saying anything bad about it, but one thing for sure is it's a little bit bulkier and it's a lot heavier than you are here with the URGI. So this is sort of like the modernized 2019 version of this little guy here. So one thing I need to address too, because I know a lot of people have watched a lot of my barrel videos, is uh, the length of the 10.3 inch barrel. Again, that's kind of a government thing. They tend to like that. In the past, I've recommended uh, for absolute reliability and a little bit better improved terminal ballistics to go with an 11 and a half. Stand by that. That said, this has the uh, new gas port sizing from Daniel Defense that they came out with a year or two ago. And uh, obviously it's very tested at this point. And like I said, it's been 100% reliable to date. So can't be too mad about that. All in all, I really like it. Uh, I'm glad they're offering it for both uh, civilians and their military customers. It's a fun little package. Um, you know, you can get stuff out there that's gonna look similar and have similar type components for less, but I think the URGIs really are pretty cool. And if you guys are clone junkies, uh, it's definitely something to take a look at. I haven't seen any pictures of these in the wild yet. I have seen the uh, 14 inch ones out there in the wild. And just like anything in the military, it takes a long time for things to be fielded. So um, who knows when they'll be out there. I'll probably post some pictures on my Facebook or Instagram page though, if they are spotted in the wild. That's pretty much it guys. If you have any questions about this upper or anything else um, that we talked about in the video, by all means post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. That's generally speaking the best way to get in touch with me simply because I see the messages over there. I don't always see them on uh, YouTube, Vol30, anywhere else that I post videos. So that's pretty much it. If you guys aren't subscribed and you like what you saw here, go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you guys are subscribed though, make sure you guys are actually clicking that notification bell. Uh, things are always changing with YouTube and it seems that if you're not, if you haven't clicked the notification, they don't want to tell you about the videos that I release. I have no idea why, um, but that's the latest and greatest from YouTube. Either way, guys, thank you very much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.